Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 16th, 2022, current on 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including Tropical Storm Fiona and what impacts it's going to be bringing to portions of the Leeward Islands and could it be a threat to the United States? So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have Tropical Storm Fiona now nearing the Leeward Islands at this point. So we'll be moving northwestward over the next couple of days, and we'll have to watch this for potential land impacts. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And then we also have a slew of tropical waves right now emerging off the coast of Africa. These are a pretty low latitude, so we'll have to watch these over the next couple of days to see just how much they move towards the west here. And if they encounter a more favorable environment for development at this particular time. We take a look here at the closed in uh, zoomed visible satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Fiona. We notice that a couple of things are starting to change today with the overall appearance. First of all, we notice that the storm is still struggling. However, we notice that today the deeper convection has actually moved very close now to the low level circulation. Now, it is still displaced off towards the uh, eastern side of the circulation due to that southwest and westerly shear. And so this is still going to continue for several days, but the storm environment is going to start to change and the overall storm motion is going to begin to slow down. And so this might allow for a more consolidated uh, circulation to try to develop. Now, either way, again, we notice that the circulation is only a couple hundred miles or so, maybe about 100 miles or so off uh, the coast here of the northern part of the Leeward Islands at this point. And again, the heavy rainfall and flooding concern will mainly occur on the eastern side of the storm. If we take a look here at the reconnaissance aircraft that was in there from earlier this afternoon. Uh, we noticed that we do still have some pretty strong tropical storm force winds on the flight level on the northern side here. And that uh, edge of the convection is starting to grow closer to the low level circulation somewhere over in this vicinity. And so this means that again, we're starting to see this begin to slow down and for the consolidation and alignment of that low and mid-level circulation. So that's going to be crucial for the overall intensity as this approaches Hispaniola. If we look at the official track forecast, we notice that a few things today. First of all, the overall track has shifted a little bit further towards the south and west to account for that west-southwesterly motion that we had last night going into this morning. We have tropical storm warnings in effect for the island of Puerto Rico. We'll get into the zoomed in uh, advisories and impacts here in a second. We notice that this is expected to maybe even intensify slightly as this nears Hispaniola being about 65 to 70 miles per hour, moving over the island here, moving northwest and eventually becoming a hurricane on the other side as this is somewhere to slightly the northeast of the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas within five days officially. This is the center forecast. This is not the exact uh, impact risk. But we notice that the cone is pretty big at this point because there's a wide range of uncertainty. We could have a storm as far southwest as the eastern part of Cuba or a storm that is for, uh, way further towards the north, 700 miles to the northeast of the island chain at this particular point. Now, if we look at the overall advisories here, first of all, we have tropical storm warnings in effect for Puerto Rico and the U.S. British Virgin Islands down here including St. Croix in the, uh, down there. And we also have tropical storm warnings for uh, St. Kitts and Antigua and places up here in the northern leewards and then a tropical storm watch here for this island down here. And then we will likely see additional tropical storm watches issued for portions of Hispaniola later today as this storm encroaches on the region. We noticed that the overall tr uh, tropical cyclone impact risk here, this just measures the impact risk, the sensible impact risk. Uh, there is an elevated to significant risk, but most importantly, a significant risk of impacts really from the Northern Islands here in Tigua, St. Kitts, uh, portions of the U.S. British Virgin Islands, St. Croix, Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, and portions of the Turks and Caicos. Uh, there is an, a kind of, elevated to significant risk through this area. Again, most of the track forecast here, there's a very uncertain track forecast. That's why Western Cuba here is kind of left out, uh, just not really confident on where the system is going to go, although confidence has grown at least a little bit. Uh, the overall wind impact is going to be a big thing here along with the flooding. Uh, so we're really looking at about St. Kitts, Antigua, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, St. Croix, portions of southern Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola. 
We could see winds here, sustained winds that top out over 50 to 60 miles per hour, given the fact that this is now expected to be a stronger system as it is approaching that area. We could see some sustained winds here on the northern part of the island chain reaching 60 miles per hour at times. And then, of course, as this moves in towards um, the uh, Puerto Rico area and, of course, Hispaniola, those wind potentials only go up. And we could see some sustained 65 plus mile per hour winds here on the far southeastern side of Hispaniola as this gets ready to kind of cross over something like that. And then again, those 60 mile per hour winds uh, on portions of the Turks and Caicos at this point. Uh, now, after this time, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of the overall track forecast, and we're going to get to that right now. The H wharf here, this is the upper level environment because the upper level environment and the storm's intensity is going to matter a lot in the short term and it's going to matter in terms of the longer term track. So what we're dealing with right now is a storm that continues to battle some west and southwest shear. Uh, we've got this uh, tut right here. We've got another uh, kind of tut sitting over here. We've got this upper level low. And this is almost similar to the pattern that Earl was in uh, only a couple of short days ago when it was moving through this region. Of course, Earl was just a lot further north. And uh, we're going to have a lot of interesting factors playing in here. So if we move the H wharf forecast up here, uh, we notice that the storm finally today on the H wharf, it's not blowing this major hurricane up north of the, uh, you know, north of Puerto Rico. In fact, it's got a reasonable solution, 997 millibar low, a uh, modest, you know, tropical storm at this point south of Puerto Rico. Uh, as long as this stays south of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is going to get slammed with the heavy rainfall and flooding potential along with the heaviest weather to, towards the north, including that, that heavy wind threat as well. Um, but the upper level environment does change and allow for some gradual intensification. And with the storm overall slowing down, this might allow the low and mid-level sensors to finally become more aligned. Uh, this eventually then crosses Hispaniola on the eastern side and then tries to uh, develop into a potent hurricane at this particular point while moving northwest. This particular version of the H wharf would probably carry this out to sea. Again, a large portion of that here, if we actually look at the 500 millibar height anomalies coming off the GFS here, uh, we notice that over the next several days, we're going to have this uh, weakness in the ridge to the north developing. And so as long as our system crosses Hispaniola and gets strong enough, we're not seeing this ridge. It, it seems like this ridge is not wanting to propagate eastward much. Um, although there are still some short-term differences and the latest ICON forecast did have this ridge propagating northeast um, and potentially setting up a blocking period or blocking pattern. So this does become quite interesting. But assuming that this ridge doesn't move towards the northeast far enough and the storm actually gets strong enough after crossing Hispaniola, uh, this is an easy out to sea trajectory here. This would turn around the ridge here between Hatteras and Bermuda and move comfortably out to sea, potentially maybe though a threat for Bermuda or Atlantic Canada at this particular point. The 0Z European forecast, again, kind of the same similar solution, but a little bit weaker initially. And so that leads to a storm that ends up here within about six days uh, that is to the northeast of Cuba at this point and sitting in the Turks and Caicos, eventually gets ejected northward, but then gets caught up once again and gets shoved uh, towards the north and west here, kind of almost due westernly, um, you know, potentially could be threatening the Carolinas. Um, the ensemble forecast from the 060 run H or not H wharf, but Europe did show again, a Southern trajectory South of Puerto Rico. So almost all of the models at this point, um, agree that Puerto Rico while not taking the center hit will take a significant hit from the heavy rainfall and wind potential here, then crossing over Hispaniola. And this is where things begin to diverge. We notice that, um, this is by hour 102 here. So we end up with a kind of a, a different solution here, several different possibilities. We notice that again, we have some members that are stronger earlier, and this is why I said intensity in the short term matters. We notice that the stronger in the short term leads to a stronger system here by about day three into day four, and this is going to allow for a more right trajectory. So this would basically mean, this is kind of following similar to NHC's forecast, that we have a storm approaching the Turks and Caicos, moving towards the northwest and getting strong. And then we have this camp here 
and kind of a growing camp that is a little bit uh, weaker and keeps the system further towards the west, kind of paralleling the, Cu the Cuba uh, Peninsula here. And eventually, again, we kind of see some of those members begin to significantly diverge where we have, again, the stronger members here. Now, we're not seeing it, a you know extreme right path here but again the stronger members are over here the weaker members are over here towards florida and uh, the bahamas and cuba so we have a wide range of possibilities here in the short term which is why it's very hard to nail down where exactly the storm is going to go and i don't quite think we're done with the southern lead trajectory and the southward shifts in the models uh, for at least the next day or two. So we have a lot to watch here, a lot of possibilities. And of course, uh, I'm going to have another video update later this afternoon and evening going over some of the latest guidance from there. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some later today.